we're talking about this doxorubicin and olaritumab, and, and the data, although really good, is, is not clear-cut, right? Because this was a phase two study. This wasn't a study that uh, we designed in a pivotal fashion, right? And um, again, we were somewhat surprised. There was a 50% improvement in PFS from about six months to, from four months to six months, but we saw an 11-month improvement in overall survival, right, which is something we've never seen before. But it's a phase two study. It was granted accelerated approval. There were approximately 65, 66 patients in each arm. The phase three study, which will really answer the question and approval is conditioned on, will probably be out hopefully sometime relatively soon. What, what would you need to look for in that study to say this is the de facto you know, regimen versus is it still the discussion that you're having with patients? And then when we go past this, I also want to mention there are other regimens, right? Gemcitabine and docetaxel. There was the Geddes study, which in my opinion, we'll maybe touch base on that a little bit, showed equivalence to doxorubicin. It definitely didn't show tremendous inferiority to doxorubicin. What do you want to see in the phase three study, if anything? What would that mean to you? And then how do you sequence all of these regimens for patients? Because I think the community oncologist is going to say, wow, how do I start? What do I use second line? Let's think about this a little bit. So who wants to start with that? I'm happy to start. I, I, I mean, for, for me, an, an anthracycline-based regimen uh, for the vast majority of patients uh, is cemented in the frontline setting. And we can debate whether it's doxorubicin in combination with alaritumab or doxorubicin in combination with ifosfamide. My strategy, similar to Kristen's, is for someone with a pending visceral crisis, for example, I'm more likely to give uh, doxorubicin in combination with lifosomide. But to answer your question with respect to uh, the phase three doxolera study, the announced study, the um, question is what do we consider clinically meaningful from an overall survival benefit? Uh, in the phase two, 11.8 months, I think all of us at the table would agree that that's clinically meaningful. <laughs> yeah, um, if the phase three comes back and it's nine months or six months or four months, um, that to me is still valuable. For me, if it's three months or higher, I, I, you know, I'll take it. We, we haven't seen a survival benefit uh, in any of our therapies. And, and the key is gonna be also is that tolerability, right? Comparing doxolaritumab versus doc, doxifos is mm -hmm. dramatically easier. <laughs> and if you're getting similar outcomes as you do with doxifos, and it's been proven and it's clinically significant and statistically significant, I think that it's, it's gonna... We would need another study to answer that question. I think the best, uh, the best approach for this to, uh, for John's concerns yeah. is that if we do a randomized study uh, with IFOS Adria versus um, Adria Olara, that would definitely answer our questions and put it this probably won't happen. for metastatic, yeah. It can happen because of, you know, the side effects, I guess, but that will be the ultimate study that will put ifosfamide aside. So, so let's, let's start also to talk about gemcitabine-based regimens mm -hmm. in the United States. Gemcitabine, yeah. docetaxel, very popular. In Europe, it's more gemcitabine, decarbazine. I do want to give a shout out to doxorubicin and decarbazine in certain subtypes, particularly the uterine leiomyosarcomas. Mm -hmm. There's strong data in that as well. Um, the, the Europeans, again, did the Geddes study, which actually looked in the frontline setting uh, gem cytobine and docetaxel versus doxorubicin. The gemcitabine was grossly underdosed at timed, and, and there may have been some bias there. And, and relatively, the outcomes were the same. Is there any time that you would use gemcitabine docetaxel in the frontline setting or gemcitabine decarbazine in the frontline setting? Yeah, sure. If they have heart issues, if they have issues with toxicities, I mean, like, I think, I think certainly, to a certain degree, though, uh, the the sequencing of, of treatments is a bit semantic in general because almost all my patients are going to get all these therapies. Uh, it's not like they're going to fail one and they're going to stop everything and then they'll be done. I think most, the vast majority of my patients will, will receive four to six lines of therapy on average. I mean, it's, it's very do, do you start your first line therapy already thinking about your second line therapy? Does that I come do. into play? Yeah. And also it's important mm -hmm. in terms of how to give the gemcitabine and docetaxel. So we've mm -hmm. been giving it every two weeks, both drugs given every two weeks at higher doses, mm -hmm. but over 30 minutes of gemcitabine. Whereas when you give the day one, day eight, on day eight, you're giving a lot of uh, docetaxel, you're giving 90 minutes of gemcitabine. So we've had really good results with every two week gemcitabine and docetaxel. And the dose of gemcitabine is 1500 milligrams mm -hmm. per meter squared. And the, uh, the docetaxel is 50 milligrams per meter squared. So we have really good responses. And 
Um, I usually tend to use that for older patients older than 70 when adromycin is a little bit, you know, they may have atrial fibrillation or some cardiac issues. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the, the initial paper uh, from Dr. Mackey and Dr. Hensley mm -hmm. for gemcitabine tax, the docetaxel utilize a very high dose of docetaxel. Right. And oftentimes I, I, I don't ever start with that dose. So 100 milligrams per meter squared is, is very, very toxic. And, and I'm not sure that it adds that much more benefit, frankly. And so I think I try to dose reduce that to begin with. But even then, I think uh, gemcitabine docetaxel, I think uh, general practitioners may be more familiar and more comfortable with it. And so they give it more frequently early on. Although I think it's, it's, it's a tougher regimen to a certain degree. It, it, people have a yeah. hard time. Docetaxel is quite toxic. Yeah. And at those doses, you're getting a lot of edema. Yeah. You're getting a lot of uh, you know, a neuropathy as well. And, and it, 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 can, it can be harsh, and, but it can be very, very effective. And, and, but my uh, dosing is the best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I put them on maintenance. So these people have metastatic disease. Do you just do six cycles? Do you mm -hmm. do four cycles? Well, so well, I usually do. It's a, it's a benefit of it. Yeah. And actually, there are some centers that do a split dose of gemcitabine docetaxel lower on, where they do mm -hmm. probably about 935 day one day, yeah. day 15, right? And that's tolerated.